So we are trying to figure out, uh, okay, so we know what kind of charges where um, positive charges here, negative charges here, and what we want to answer is, well, um, um, so what's the, how much charge is here? What's the actual magnitude? What's the amount of positive charge here? And what's the amount of negative charge here? Uh, oh, I realize I skipped a question. Uh, for the electric field around, I answered one question. This question for the electric field here, right? So that's for region two. I never got to regions one and three. Can people tell me what electric field is here and here? Yeah, zero here and zero here. Katie, can you tell the class how you got that? Like, yeah, some of different contributions. So what the thinking process that Katie is going through is remembering the superposition principle. So let me sketch this up because this is uh, um, if useful for what I'm going to do next. So imagine you have this um, electric field due to a single negative plate. Let me draw that as one picture. And electric field due to a single positive plate. All right. Then here, the electric fields look like this. It points towards the negative plate, towards the negative plate. And here, electric fields point away from the plate. Point away from the plate. So you can see that in the region that we are labeling as region two, this region here, region two, you can see that the contribution to the net electric field from each one of these charge distributions, they add so that you get this non-zero electric field. But outside here in region one or here in region three, you see that their uh, relative directions are opposite. So Kate, can you say, oh, how do you know they cancel exactly? They are at different distances, right? So what, how do you know that they cancel exactly? Same, so how do you know they are same magnitude? Um, because you are remembering that it's an electric field of a plane which does not depend on distance. So here, the contribution to this electric, contribution to the net electric field um, due to the single plate on either side, the magnitude is electric field here is equal to ch surface charge density over two epsilon naught. Same thing here, the magnitude here is equal to surface charge density over two epsilon naught. So what you get is in between where they add, the total electric field, the result of these two being added together is equal to sigma over two epsilon naught times two or add them together, so you get sigma over epsilon naught. This is the expression for the electric field between the two plates due to the surface charge density of plus sigma and minus sigma on those two sides. And outside here and here, they cancel each other out and they go to zero. Yeah. So I'm going through this detail because that will help us answer part B. It's asking how much charge? So if we were looking at this so far, um, so, well, yeah, so what I just brought up right now, this is the last piece of information that you need to be able to answer this question, how much charge? So, I mean, um, so we know the side. Um, so, you know, about this picture, what do we know so far? Like what do we already, what dynamic quantities about this situation do we already know? Voltage. We know voltage difference. We know electric field. Distance. Okay, distance, yeah. So, um, so let's say those three informations we know, and now we are trying to get to, okay, which of those three things 
can be related to a charge, amount of charge on either plate, so that I don't require any additional information. Right? Now, when you are new to problems like this, you might automatically go to this list here, and then maybe even jump to something like this. But then you run into issues when you do that. Like, what issues do you see? So you know the voltage. Yeah, you don't know the energy. And it turns out, actually, this charge is the wrong charge. That's the test charge. That's not the charges that are in your distribution already. So you know, I'm just pointing out the kind of traps that you might fall in if you're just going formula hunting. So, but, so we know something about voltage and electric field. And uh, let me tell you this. There's a reason that I keep writing down these formulas each time we do electrostatics. There's a reason that I keep writing down these formulas. It's uh, because of how useful they are, provided that you use it correctly. You always, have, whenever you use it, you have to keep the geometry in mind. You cannot misapply them. You have to apply it for the correct geometry. But when you do, these formulas will always tell you this, relationship between electric field and the charge and distance. Charge and distance, or here, just the charge. So whenever you want to either get electric field from charge or the other way around, charge from electric field, these are the formulas that will connect that if you are using it for the correct geometry. Um, so here, the formula that would uh, uh, connect the charge to the electric field, which you know, is this expression here, what we just went through. And this comes from the, uh, this is plain uh, electric field formula. So to answer this uh, question of part B, how much charge, this, is, this is, is my starting place. For how much charge, I would start out with, all right, I know the electric field inside the region. I know E0. And this electric field E0 can be represented in terms of surface charge density sigma. That E0 is equal to sigma over epsilon naught. All right, um, so what's a sigma? Do we have enough information here to calculate sigma? Yeah, we are given the, or we want to know something about charge, and we are given the area for some reason. And this is why area was given. So that you can express a sigma as charge per area. I mean, that's the definition of sigma, right? So this is amount of charge, per area divided by epsilon naught. So now you can take this expression and solve it for charge. When you do that, this is what you end up with. Q is equal to, um, um, epsilon naught times area times the strength of electric field. And you know, if you want to bring this all the way back to the uh, information that's given in the question, then V naught over D. So, so epsilon naught area times voltage naught over D. So that's the amount of charge. 